How can a call center manager be a critical skill in South Africa? It was listed there. So I want to understand, in terms of the people that have been granted or whose visas have been approved as a result of uh, resolving this uh, backlog that Home Affairs is uh, speaking about, uh, Honorable Minister, can we be provided a list of exactly what are these critical skills that have been approved? Because you are going to find that while well, giving people are saying critical skills, but you know when 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 some of us we hear critical skills, we think a hey, high level engineering, scientific uh, skills, and so on and so on. We don't think uh, somebody who's coming here for bricklaying and call center manager. So let's get the list of who exactly has been approved through this process, Honorable Minister where you are dealing with the backlog. So I would like us to get that report to see exactly which of these skills have been approved uh, by Home Affairs. Also, this uh, digital nomad visa that you want to introduce, we know that it is mostly the tourism sector here in Cape Town, that one, that thing. It's uh, people who own tourist establishment who are pushing for that thing. What is the social and economic impact of that thing? Because already there are complaints that these people who are coming here as digital nomads, they are driving up the the price of rental accommodation, they are pushing the cost of limit, the cost of living in cities like Cape Town. Here. So what, what is the, the cost, the social and economic cost of having this particular category of visa that you want to introduce? Now I want to move on to this one of uh, the white paper. There's been a lot of interest around this white paper on social media and around the country. Uh, it has ignited a lot of debates from various quarters. But I want to understand uh, Honorable Chair, <laughs> we we should not we should not take a position that is going to be interpreted by our fellow Africans as being a very anti-African posture towards the immigration of African people in this country because. It's a perception out there, whether it's true or not, but there's a perception out there that South Africa seeks to insulate itself from the rest of the continent, is bringing in stringent measures to stem the flow of particularly black migrants from the African continent. So that's something that we should also be mindful of, that we don't want that particular perception, whether it's true or not, but we don't want it because we are part of Africa, we are part of Agenda 2063, which promotes the free movement of our people in the rest of Africa. Secondly, what is the path to citizenship that is available for children of what you might call illegal immigrants who have been here in the country for most of their lives. They've been to school because they're allowed to go to school. I think the court said you can't turn them back if they don't have uh, documentation. They've been here, 
they've gone to our universities, they've studied, they've done all of that. What is the path to citizenship that is available for those particular kind of uh, people? Because we are told that citizenship is only uh, the children follow the citizenship of their, of their parents. But in these particular instances, is this policy going to address those particular issues to create a path to citizenship for the children of, uh, of migrants? And also, you speak about the, the first safe country principle. Now, with this principle, basically what we are saying was that we don't want a person, like we had a uh, chairperson, of those CIA Afghanistani uh, people who landed here last year, who were brought here by the CIA through Zimbabwe. We are saying we want to address those kind of issues. But now, here's a question. We have relations with countries like Palestine. Palestine is a thousand kilometers away. I saw on the news a few days ago we were receiving some refugees from Palestine. So what is going to be the impact of our relations? Or how are we going to implement this particular principle in relations to our allies, countries like Palestine, which have been uh, suffering for many years, are we going to say, no, Palestine is a thousand kilometers away from South Africa. You can't be granted the refugee status. You should try some Egypt or try Morocco and wherever. So how is this principle going to be practically applied in the context of South Africa, given the relationship we have with some of these countries. Thank you, Chair. I want to start off with uh, the last uh, presentation. Uh, just have a few questions around it. Um, uh, firstly, I just want to understand this uh, general work visa category. What exactly is that and who gets granted that particular kind of uh, visa so just need clarity on that and then secondly 